This is a video of the Unit 9 test review. So we're going to go ahead and go over to another screen for a moment where I have the definitions. So here, um, the definition of the center is a point. The point the circle is equidistant from. So we have two centers here. We have A right there. And we have B right there. So A right there and B over there. Um, then we have a secant, a line that intersects a circle at twice. So that's this right here. It's a line because it has arrows on it. The point of tangency where a tangent intersects the circle. So this one is point D up here or point C down here. Um, segment uh, from the center to the circle is the radius. And we have three of these. We have this one right here. We have another one right here. We have another one over here. And we have the last one right there. Those are all of our radii. Then we have a chord, which is a segment that intersects a circle at two points. Now this one I'm going to do a little bit differently so you guys can see it. Um, when I do this one, um, and I'm talking about a, a chord, if it has endpoints on the circle, then it's a chord. So that's a chord, GD, and then this is a chord, EF. Um, the next one is a diameter, and this is a segment that intersects a circle at two points and goes through the center. So this one that we did over here, this EF, is our diameter because it's a chord that goes to the center of the circle. Um, then our last one is a tangent, and this is a line that intersects the circle at one point. So that would be this line right here because it intersects this circle right here, and it intersects this circle right over here. So for number eight and nine, the formula that we use is tangent equals tangent. So I'm going to write that up here. So we know that these two tangents are congruent to each other. So we're going to set it up 6x plus 2 equals 9x minus 10. Subtract 6x from both sides. That's going to give us 3x over here. Add 10 to both sides. That's going to give us 12 over here. Divide both sides by 3. That gives us x is equal to 4. And the way we check this is by plugging it back in. So 6 times 4 plus 2 is equal to 24 plus 2. That's 26. And then we've got 9 times 4 minus 10. 9 times 4 is 36. 36 minus 10 is also 26. So this is our check to make sure our answer is correct. Again, over here for number 9, we're going to set these two tangents equal to each other. So we're going to do 7x minus 12 equals 5x minus 18. Subtract 5x from both sides. That gives us 2x. Add 12 to both sides. And oh, by the way, this was supposed to be a plus. Sorry, y'all. This was supposed to be a plus. So we're going to add 12 to 18. And we do that, we get 30. And then when we divide both sides by 2, we get x equals 15. Again, we're going to check this. So 7 times 15 minus 12. We want to see, does that equal 5 times 15 plus 18? 7 times 15 is 105. So this is 105 minus 12. And then uh, 5 times 15 equal to 78, uh, yeah, 5 times 15 plus 18, this equals 93, and then 105 minus 12 is equal to 93, so 93 does equal 93. Number 10 says, given that circle O with a radius of 10 and OC is 6, find the length of AB. So on this problem, <clears throat> the first thing we have to do is label what we have. So the radius is OB, so we're going to label it 10. And OC is 6. And I also know that AC and CB are congruent because OC is a perpendicular bisector of AB. So when I do this, I can then solve for CB. And because CB is equal to AC, we just do 2 times whatever CB is. So what we're going to do here is 6 squared plus CB squared is equal to 10 squared. This is 36 plus CB squared equals 100. We're going to subtract 36 from both sides. 
So be CB squared is equal to 64. Take the square root of both sides. So CB is equal to 8. That means this is 8, which means AC is also 8. So if I'm trying to find AB, it's 16 because 8 plus 8 is 16. So AB is equal to 16. Number 11 says find the value of x. Mn is 48, op is 10, and it's a perpendicular bisector of mn. So if it's a perpendicular bisector, again, it cuts this into two equal parts. It means we could divide that 48 by 2. So pn is 24. And we need to, we need to draw another um, radius here. We know that or is a radius. We're trying to find x. So we can draw another radius here at on and that O, N, and X are going to be the same length because they're both radius of the circle. So here again, we have a right triangle. So this time we're going to do 10 squared plus 24 squared, and we're going to set that equal to O, N squared, and our O, N is the same as X. So when we do 10 squared, we get 100. When we do 24 squared, we get 576. Add those two together. That's 676, and that equals ON squared. Take the square root of both sides. So ON equals 26, which means that equals X. For 12 and 13, our formula is part times part equals part times part. So we're going to do 12 times 10, and we're going to set that equal to 15 times x. This is 120 equals 15x, so x is equal to 8. And again, we can check this by plugging it back into the formula. So we've got 12 times 10, that's 120. And we want to know, is that equal to 8 times 15? And it is. 8 times 15 is also 120. So here for number 13, same thing. Part times part equals part times part. So we're going to do 9 times 8 is equal to 6 times 2x minus 2. This is 72 is equal to 6 times 2x is 12x. 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. We're going to add that 12 to both sides. When we do that, we get 84 equals 12x, and 12 goes into 84 seven times, so x is equal to 7. Again, we're going to check this by putting 7 in up here. 2 times 7 minus 2, that's 14 minus 2, that's 12. So we want to see is 12 times 6 equal to 84, no, sorry, 72. <coughs> Let me put this down here, um, because the other one is 9 times 8. So 72 is equal to 72. Over here for number 14, D is the end center of um, an A, D, A, B, B, D, and C, D are equal. They're equal because they're all radii of the circle. What is the term used to describe X, D, Y, D, N, Z, D? This is an angle bisector. So let's look at number 15 now. For these, 15 and 16, we're going to do outside times whole because these are secant equals outside times whole. That's what I'm going to write here, outside times whole equals outside times, what's been so good, whole. So over here on the left, our outside is here. Our whole is here, so it's going to be 4 times x. Our outside is here, which is 5. Our whole is 5 plus 7, which is 12. So this is going to be 4x equals 60. So x equals 15. Again, we can check this. Let me erase this. So up here for this x, <coughs> we're going to put are 15. So 
that would be 4 times 15, that equals 60, and 60 equals 60. So that is the correct answer. So let's go ahead and work this one over here. So on this one, again, we're going to do outside times whole. So we've got our outside here, our whole there, our outside is 7, our whole is 7 plus 18, which is 25. And then down here we've got our outside here, which is x, and our whole down here, which is 35. 7 times 25 is 175. And that's 35x. I'm going to divide both sides by 35. So x is equal to, I don't know if my answer here, yeah, 5. So again, we're going to plug 5 in here for this one. So on the left, we got the answer 175. So our question really is, is 5 times 35, 175? And it is. So 175 does equal 175. So a 17 and 18, our formula is going to be tangent squared equals, again, outside times whole because we have a tangent and we have a secant. So here's our tangent. So that's the part we're going to square. Here's our outside. And here's our whole. So 30 squared is 900. x times x is x squared. x times 32 is 32x. I'm going to move that 900 to the other side. So it's going to be x squared plus 32x minus 900 equals 0. Then we're going to have to factor this. The factors are x plus 50 and x minus 18. Going to set both those factors equal to 0. So x minus x plus 50 equals 0. So x equals negative 50. That answer can be thrown out because we know it's we don't have anything as a negative length. So x minus 18 equals 0. So x equals 18. Here again we can check our answer. So up here I'm going to put 18. So this is going to be 18 times 18 plus 32, that's 18 times 50, and 18 times 50 is equal to 900, and that's what 30 squared was equal to. So we did get the right answer. So over here, we're going to square this 45. So we're going to do 45 squared, and we're going to multiply that times the outside times the whole. So this is equal to 27 times 27 plus x. So 45 squared is 2025. And this is going to end up being 27 times 27 is 27. Can't find my answer on here, y'all. 729 plus 27x. Subtract the 729 from both sides. And I get 1296 equals 27x. Divide so both sides by 27. So x equals 48. Again, let's check this. So we're going to put the 48 here. So now this is going to be whatever this is right here, which was 2025. So when we multiply 27 times 27 plus 48, it should equal 2025. So 27 times 27 plus 48, 27 plus 48 is 75, so 27 times 75 is indeed 2025. So if these two numbers equal each other again, then we got the right answer. Number 19 says, if AC bisects BD, what is it? So if AC bisects BD, it would be a perpendicular. Bisector. It tells us in this problem that AE is 12. AE is a radius. So if A is 12, AE is 12, then BE is 12, and so is ED. And 12 plus 12 
is equal to 24. So that is the length of BD. So on number 20, it says that we're given that QR is 16 and ST is 16. So we know that these two chords are congruent. And if the two chords are congruent and they are at right angles, and they are, from the center, then we know that those two um, lengths from the center to the chords are equidistant. So that means we can set them equal to each other. 2x is equal to 5x minus 9. I'm going to subtract 2x from both sides. That would give me, actually, let's just subtract 5x from both sides. That would give me negative 3x is equal to negative 9. Divo divide both sides by negative 3. Get that x is equal to 3. That's not the answer because the problem asks us what CB is. So we have to plug that back in. So we're going to do 5 times 3 minus 9. That's 15 minus 9. That's 6. And this is another problem where we can check our answer because we can see what 2 times 3 is. And that is also 6 because these two answers match. We know we got the right answer. All right, so let's talk about our process for number 21. So the very first thing I told you all to do was group your x's and your y's. So I'm going to do x squared here. Um, y squared here, plus 4x here, minus 12y there, and I'm going to move this 24 to the other side of the equal sign, which means it's going to be a plus 24. Our next step is dividing this by 2 and this by 2, so I get x plus 4 here squared. Remember, we're going to square this over here, the 4 squared, we're going to put it back up here. When we add it to the left, we've got to add it to the right. Then we're going to do the same thing here, y. We're going to divide that negative 12 by 2, so that's negative 6 squared again. So we're going to do negative 6 squared, that's 36, maybe. <laughs> it doesn't like blue. So we're going to add the 36 to here as well. So what we get here over on the right when we add all of this together is we get 64. So now the problem actually asks us what is the center and the radius. So we're going to pull this number, this number, um, to get the center. Remember, we always have to change the sign because our standard equation says x minus h, uh, y minus k. So this is going to be a negative 4, and this is going to be a positive 6. That's our center. And then we're going to take the square root of 64 to get the radius. So when we want the radius, we take the square root of 64, so that's 8. So our last problem says the pizza parlor can deliver only a small part of the city. Write an equation for the boundary where the company delivers and find its radius. So the first thing we have to do here is find what our center of our circle is. And if we go over 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's negative 4. And we go down 1, 2, 3, 4. That's also a negative 4. Our radius, if we count it, is 1, 2, 3. Doesn't matter which direction we go. We could go left, right, up, or down. Then we just have to plug these into our equation. Now our equation is x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where h and k are our center, and r is our radius. So that's what we're going to do. So when we subtract the negative, so this can be x minus a minus 4, so that's going to be x plus 4 squared. This is going to be y minus a minus 4 again, so this is going to be plus 4 squared. And when we square the 3, we get 9. 